Hey, we're Ben and MP, and we're in the process of rebuilding this wrecked schooner. In this video, you'll see the first prototype of what our windows are going to look like. Before we can move over to the windows, 300 pieces of wood have to be prepared and brought over to next door. And finally, our home is being prepared for and receiving its first layer of paint, which is changing everything a lot. Don't forget to click that subscribe button, and we really hope you enjoy the video. Not only is there a lot of work going on outside the boat, we've also started in here with Jose David and myself preparing the interior outer bulkheads or interior walls to be like the seals are going to be closed. So we're going to use the same corking compound we used for the hull. We've just found that's the best one to use. It's solid enough to flatten and make look nice and paint on top, but it still moves and it expands with the wood if it dries out, gets wet, hot or cold. So that's what we're gonna do. We've already finished brushing all these walls down, compressed all the dirt out, put ethanol in all the seams, uh, and now he's actually already covered up some of it with some masking tape and started to fill up some of the seams here. So this is the compound that we're using, masking tape, and we're just filling in all these seams here. We're gonna do all of these and all of these. So let's get cracking on this interior. That's been one full day of putting masking tape or well, cleaning it all with ethanol, a compressor and a brush, placing the masking tape and placing the epoxy compound in between. We managed to do just about half the interior. So all this, all this over here. These as well, we're still missing some. Here at the bow. And then tomorrow, hopefully, we'll be able to finish all of the port side. This is going to be corked still, and then we're going to place some corking compound over that. But day one of this is finished. Day two, we'll finish the whole thing, and then we can start looking at the next steps. And what's your next step? Hmm? Yeah? Two of these bulkheads, which is the forward one attaching to the bow locker. And this aft one, which is going to the engine room, I want to have corked. So we're going to cork it to make sure it's even more watertight and soundproof. But uh, so I'm going to cork it now, or at least attempt to. I've bought a, a kind of kind of corking iron, which is totally not a corking iron, but I have made the tip a bit more blunt than what it was. And it does fit nicely in between these seams. And I've got a really heavy hammer for caulking, which is also not right. But for now, until I get proper tools, this is what I'm going to use and attempt to do. So I'm going to put one thread of caulking cotton in it. For now, it's just a big ball in each seam and hope it works. But let's hope we never need to find out.
while we have been cooking over there. Over here we have David working with Hi. the compound. <laughs> so a long time ago we had filled the seams of the housing area or the superstructure with UV proof Sikaflex. Although the seams were quite big to start with and the wood has kind of dried out. The seams have grown and the Sikaflex just keeps opening and it's just a waste of Sikaflex to keep put them, putting them. So we are going to use this corking compound that we're using for the hull, which has bigger seams already and it's, it's closed and it's no issue on the hull. So we're going to use this. Come and have a look. It's epoxy by the way, but we're going to varnish or paint over anything epoxy so it's not going to dry out or discolor in but the what sun. is the coolest thing about this epoxy for corking? It's flexible. So on the hull it's flexible, which is definitely needed. It's like very solid and it really sticks to the wood, but it stays flexible. And here it doesn't need to be as flexible, but it's always good to be flexible because planks move, right? And the temperature of the sun and everything just makes the wood move. So here we go. It smells like, does it smell like empty? Mmm, creme brulee. Creme brulee, there we go. something really 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 exciting what just arrived here is the first prototype we're about to test it in place judge it and if you like it we can start making the real window so let's see how the prototype goes here's the first prototype and I think it's probably the last because I really really like it he made the frame differently so we could see if we make the corner round or not so I'm comparing and I like it round more than straight we are discussing if we're gonna keep both windows possible of moving or just one fixed and the other one that moves it's gonna be made of glass probably here instead of polycarbonate tempered, tempered glass we're still discussing that. Some holes here for draining any water that might get caught in there. I think. So I think this is it. like uh, straight, straight, and straight. And on the other side, it's been made completely round. And we like the round one, which is also going to be on everything then. And you can see that the hole originally was square, but with this nice frame and this little detail here, it really gets round corners, which. I really like, I think it's first and last prototype, guys. <laughs> Very cool. You guys know I hate the idea of wasted material, wasted trees, so every single piece of wood that we didn't need to use back then when we were building something was kept here in the shipyard. And now the time has come that I think is the time that we're gonna use the most scrap wood possible because all our windows are gonna be made of scrap wood. So now we are selecting the pieces, we're gonna cut them exactly in the shapes we need and we're gonna have windows out of what we have already. How amazing is that? On the shopping list for our windows, we need 30, 60, 120, 180, 240, 300 pieces of wood, of which the largest one is 85 centimeters long and six centimeters thick. Uh, we're actually doing it here with our neighbors because they do a lot more precision, small, uh, what do you call it, like cabin making and interior making, but there was no point of them getting new wood if we had a bunch left. So we're going to cut all these pieces, bring them next door so our windows can be made without wasting anything. So that's super cool. 
Here's the shopping list, and that's the shop. A lot of stuff to cut, but it's gonna be gonna be nice. Well, our windows are somehow coming to life back here. Let me show you what's happening over here. At the beginning, I used to be upset when one neighbor left and another neighbor left and another neighbor left. And I was like, whoa, it's the fourth boat that comes up and we're still at the same place. What's happening today is the same neighbor we had a year ago is overlapping us because he's coming and being lifted again and probably going back to water before us. I mean, probably of course and i'm okay with that i accepted that the work took a lot longer than we expected but also the result is so much better than what we ever dreamed of so it is what it is good things take time It's going to rain soon, so we want to finish the superstruct and superstruct right now. So the epoxy corking compound has already been placed in between all the seams. It's been sanded. Uh, Adi has gone over it with a uh, ethanol and a cloth. Now I'm going to pass him this epoxy paint, which we're going to paint the first layer onto the superstruct. It's not the permanent layer, but it's just protective. The reason why we're doing this now and interrupting the rest is it's going to rain soon, and the rain kind of the wood absorbs the rain then it expands and then the sun will come out again and it'll shrink again and that just really works on the seams and it makes gaps in the seams so that's why we really want to before it rains start applying the first layer of protective paint all around the superstructure but i'm going to go back inside after that and continue finishing the interior with uh, josé david so here's a little present for elio
though this is not the permanent color yet, but just seeing Yaba getting a color is so exciting. It, it really changed the looks of everything. I'm so excited about this moment. I, I can't express it. So over the last long time, I think week, maybe week and a half, Edu has been crazy busy finding all the little pieces of scrap wood in the piles over there, there, and even behind the boat to then start cutting the shapes that the guys next door need to start making the windows for the superstructure. So if you have a look over here, you'll see that there are so many and he's done a great job. There's three or four different thicknesses, but all the same length, so that length they can just cut them. And our job now is to load our little car and bring them all next door. We just thought that would be a lot quicker than carrying them all one by one. So, let's get to it.
janela, mas o homem parou aqui na rua. Ah, é? Tchau, <risos> So we've tried a lot of things and it's not working. We've got the spark, we've got fuel, we've got battery. So we're gonna leave this here. They're kind enough to let us leave it here. And then we'll call the mechanic to come and have a look at it. But we're abandoning this to continue on the boat. Chainsaw fuel out. Let's go. In case you're wondering what happened to the combi, its camshaft broke. Oh well, it seems like we are attracted to things that need a lot of work done. Anyway, speaking of a lot of work, next week we will be building our windows that will be coming to life for the first time. Join us there because we are sure you are going to enjoy watching that process. But before we say bye, we would like to thank and welcome our new patrons, Rudiger, Dane, Caroline and Andrew. And also thanks a lot for the PayPal donations, Vaco, Edward, Jonathan and Stanley. Until next Sunday.